In this video, we're going to implement array lists. Now, this example comes from the Java Foundations book, and you'll find these classes in a package called JSJF under each module. And for a lot of the modules, we'll at the very least include that code, and in many of the modules, we'll actually use that code. Although for this particular module, we'll actually write a linked list class ourselves from scratch. So this is going to be an array list, and that's going to implement the list interface. So we call that the list ADT interface. ADT stands for abstract data type, and it's going to contain methods to remove the first or the last element or to re remove a specified element. It'll also return the first or the last element stored in the list. There'll be a Boolean function that returns true if the list contains some target and false if it doesn't. Is empty returns a Boolean based on whether or not the list is empty and size returns the number of elements in the list. We also want our list to be iterable, so we'll return an iterator, and also we will have a two-string method. So the array list class itself, you'll notice it's going to implement two interfaces, list ADT and iterable. And iterable means it has to implement a function called iterator that returns an iterator. So we'll actually see an example of how to write an iterator for a collection in this class. We have two private final static constants so these will be shared by every member, and the first is a default capacity, and the second is not found. You'll see how we use this later, but it basically is there to give us a way to, in our code, express that something's not found without having to say negative one, which wouldn't be clear in the code. So we have three data members. We have the rear, and we're going to use that to keep track of where the end of the list is. We have an array, and you'll notice that this is a generic array. And we talked about how you can't actually instantiate a generic array, but this is just a declaration. We're not instantiating it yet. And then mod count. And mod count's an important thing to keep in mind. It's not the size of the array. What we're doing with mod count is we're keeping track of how many times the array list gets modified. And we use that in our iterator so that our iterator can detect if the number of elements in the list has changed while it's running. And if so, it'll return an exception because we don't want to allow the list to change if we have an active iterator out there. So we have a default constructor that's just going to create an array list with the default capacity, which is 100. And then we can also define an initial capacity, which will set rear to zero, meaning the next available spot is index zero. We instantiate our array of generic elements. The way we do that is we create an object array, and then we cast that to the generic array. And we set mod count to zero because nothing has changed yet. One of the drawbacks of using an array is that an array has a fixed size. So there's going to be times where we're going to want to expand the capacity of the array. So let's see how we do that. And then we'll see the implementation. So if we have some array that's full, here we have an array that has five elements in it. And we want to expand its capacity. Now arrays have a fixed length. So we're going to need to create a new array with the larger capacity. So what we're going to do is we're going to instantiate a new array that's twice as large as our old array. And so once we have that array that's twice as large, we're going to copy the elements from the old array into the new array. So we'll copy the 4, the 7, the 3, the 5, and then the 8. Now we have an array that's twice as big as our old array with the same elements in the same locations. So now that we've done this, we have two arrays. We have this new array, twice as big, same elements. So now we're going to reassign the array reference to the new array. Now at this point, the old array is garbage and it'll be garbage collected later. And our array reference is now referring to an array with the same contents, but with twice as many elements. And this is how we expand the capacity. Now let's see how we do that in code. We're going to double the size of the array by first creating a new array that's twice as long. Notice we have list length times two and I'll add a space there. Then we have a for loop, which will go through the original list and copy each element to the new list. Finally, remember list is just a object reference variable to an array object. So we set that to the new list that we declared here and filled here. And that'll give us a new array that's twice as big as the one we have filled with the elements that we have. So to remove the last element, we're going to check to see if the array list is empty. If it is, we're going to throw in an empty collection exception. We'll say that this is an array list. So at this point, let's take a look at that exception class. 
because that's one that we're going to define ourselves. Our empty collections exception is going to extend the runtime exception class. It's going to take everything from there, except its constructor is just going to call the superclass constructor with the string, the whatever collection you pass in is empty. So it's a runtime exception, but we're just going to instantiate it with the statement of whatever type of collection you have is empty. And you'll see us do this throughout the semester. Okay, so now we're removing the last element. So we're going to decrement rear. And if you can think of this, rear starts at zero. So we're always going to add one. And rear is not pointing to the last element. It's actually going to point to the last available index in the array. So by subtracting one from it, the rear here, now we're pointing to the last element. That's the one we want to remove. So we set up a local variable to hold a reference to that element. Then we set that index of the array to be null because we don't want there to be anything there. We've made a change, so we're going to increment mod count. We should always increment mod count because you can't change the array in such a way to reduce the number of changes. And then finally, we return the element that we removed from the array list. Remove first is a little more complicated because since we're removing the first element, we're going to have an empty location at the front of the array. So we need to shift everything one slot forward so that the array starts at index zero still. So we do our is empty check and throw the exception if it's empty. And then we take that temporary variable, set that to be the first element of the array. Then when we remove that first element of the array, now there's a gap there. So we have to move everything. So here we iterate from the start of the array to the index next to the rear of the array. We don't go all the way to the rear saying less than or equal to because we're removing everything from the next index to the previous index. And so we'll copy the rear when we get to the index right before the rear. And as we do this, we're basically moving things over one by one. So we over, we don't have to set zero to null because the very first step here sets list zero to list zero plus one. So list zero equals list one. Now, once we've done this through that, we have two copies of that last element now because it's in the rear and it's also in rear minus one. That last one is in index rear and we set that to null so that it'll be garbage collected. And then we return the element that we pulled off. So remove is actually going to find, call the find method, which is going to return the index of the element. And then once it does that, it's going to do something very similar to remove first, except that we're going to start at whatever this index is and not zero. But you'll notice the, the actual code that happens here is very similar. We're just, we're doing index instead of zero. And again, we always increment mod count. This doesn't increment mod count. So let's, let's add that. Okay. So that's to remove some element in there. And now we'll need to implement the find method and we'll see that later. First, just returns whatever is at index zero. Again, throwing an exception if the collection is empty. Last, very similar, throw an exception if it's empty. Otherwise, return rear minus one. Remember, rear points to the last available slot, not the slot where the last thing is. And you'll see why we do that in a moment. So contains, again, uses that find method. If it returns negative one, then we know it's not found. So we say if it doesn't, if whatever this result is doesn't equal not found, that'll tell us whether it contains that or not. And we can just return the result of this comparison. We don't have to set up an if then. So find, if you'll remember, is used both for remove element and for contains. So there we just start at zero. We initialize our result, which is going to be the index where we find the element. We're going to initialize that to not found. So first, if the list is empty, we're done. It's not going to be found there. And then if it isn't empty, We'll come in here and do this loop and we'll say while we haven't found what we're looking for and while we haven't reached the rear we're going to check to see if the target we're looking for is equal to what's in the list there if it is equal then we say well we're done because result is going to be equal to the index where we found the item and that'll trigger this condition otherwise we increment the scan and we repeat that until scan is equal to rear once scan is equal to rear then we know that it can't be beyond the rear because that's the next free element and there's nothing after that. Either we return not found or we return the index where we found it. Is empty. We just check to see if the rear is pointing to zero. Then we know that there's nothing there because the next available slot is zero. It's the first slot available.
the size is actually going to be equivalent to the rear. And if you think about how an array works, if it's empty, rear is pointing to index zero, the size is zero. When we add one, we increment rear, there's an element at index zero, rear is one, so the size is one. And then our two string, we're going to start off with an empty string. Then we're going to go through the entire list with a for loop, adding each element to the string, followed by a space so that we separate them. And then finally, we're going to have our iterator method. Now the iterator method is just going to return an array list iterator. And that's going to be this private class. So this is an iterator for our array list. It's going to implement the iterator interface. So we don't have a problem here when we return this iterator from our iterator method. Since this is going to implement the same interface, that will work. So we have two methods. We have the mod count that's set when we start, and then we have the current index. So when this is initialized, we set the iterator mod count to the mod count of the array list, and we set current equal to zero because we're going to start at the beginning of the array. Hasnext checks to see if the mod count we started with is equal to the current mod count. If they are, good. Otherwise, we're going to throw this concurrent modification exception. And then Hasnext is going to return the result of comparing the current index with rear. Now, again, this current index is the current index that the iterator is looking at. It has nothing to do with the array list implementation itself. And then rear would refer to whatever the rear value is of the index. So if we haven't gotten to that rear value yet, that means there's something left. And then next, again, first checks to see if there is a next. If there's not, we throw a no such element exception. And that's a standard Java exception. We increment current. And then we return list of current minus one. And we have to do this because we can't return it. We could set up a temporary variable here, but without using a variable, there's no way to return current and then increment current. So we've got to increment it and then return current minus one. And then if someone called remove, we would just throw an unsupported operation exception. So that's the array list implementation. And it's a good idea to try to familiarize yourself with what's going on here because there's a lot of ideas that will kind of carry forward into the rest of the data structures we talk about.